Hello and welcome back to The Gaming Five. It's hard to notice something like this because of the nature of how infrequently Geralt's hands make contact with someone else's, but... His hands are f***ing huge! I feel so small. Why? If you're watching this, I probably don't have to tell you how expansive The Witcher 3 already is. Whether it was so expansive that they were able to take content out and sell it to you as DLC, or that this was truly and genuinely developed separately is up for debate since we'll never know the truth other than what developers tell us. Fortunately, one thing is for certain. This DLC offers up quite the variety in its own right. But before you dive in, I also wanted to give you a heads up. If you're like me, you haven't played this game in a while, so you might be a bit rusty in combat, and this DLC's boss combat does not keep its gloves on. Get warmed up, as the game very quickly throws you into some fairly intense battles. Once you get into the story arc, you'll find yourself on a chain of quests that gives you new fun activities, from attending a wedding, to a heist from Grand Theft Witcher, to a boss fight from Witcherborn. You even get to bang a character you probably didn't even know existed. But here's what left me saddened. I would have liked this DLC to tie into the main story, and possibly even involve some of the main characters, even if just as cameos. As it stands, it feels a bit disconnected despite the variety of content. In addition, while some new gear is always welcome, it isn't exactly the kind of visually unique DLC gear you might have been hoping for, and I was a little disappointed that the best rewards weren't anything that looked or felt particularly special, even if their stats belied otherwise. I mean, this is an RPG, we're all about cool gear, right? As far as I know, changes are not tied to this DLC in particular. However, the biggest and most notable change is something that just about any RPG of this size needs. Universal storage. Boy, is that a nice touch, and something I think the recently released and personally reviewed Fallout 4 needs. I believe there are other changes as well, but you'll probably have to read some patch notes to find out, as my venture through the DLC didn't markedly reveal major changes other than the aforementioned universal storage. But I did find a kid that is so amazed by the fire graphics that his AI has no idea how to react. Clocking in at a mere $10, I am honestly quite surprised at how much content is actually here. Again, while I can't surmise with utmost certainty whether this was properly developed DLC, or simply taken out of the main game since the main game already has a blinding amount of content, I can say it's worth every penny. I do have to mark it down for simply leaving me completely out of any new developments in the main story, and also for tossing me back out of the story arc without extra cool and shiny looking stuff. But this DLC does DLC right. It provides fun, variety, and most of all, a reason to turn this game back on. If you love The Witcher 3, there's no reason you shouldn't add a little more spice to your adventure. I give The Witcher 3 Hearts of Stone DLC a 9 out of 10. That's it for today. Subscribe for more gaming content delivered directly to your retinas. I'll see you next time on The Gaming 5.